In this lesson, we're going to learn about Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. We need to start off defining what a partial pressure is. Now, it turns out that when gas is inside a container, it's always moving around and it's bumping into the walls of the container. That's what causes the pressure. Partial pressure is the pressure of one, of a ga one gas that's in a mixture of gases. Gases behave in a mixture the same way they would behave if they were in a container by themselves. So a lot of times you will see the notation, the partial pressure of oxygen or the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. This just means the pressure of that one gas when it's mixed in with others in the same container. Now Dalton's law of partial pressures tells us that if all those gases are behaving independently of one another and they exert a certain amount of pressure by themselves, that if we mix them together, we can add those pressures together. The total pressure in a mixture of gases is the sum of all the partial pressures. So mathematically what you're looking at is a formula where you're adding the partial pressure of gas A plus the partial pressure of gas B plus the partial pressure of gas C and so on depending on how many gases are in your mixture. Here's a graph example. If we have gas A represented with the red dots in a container by itself and it has a pressure of one atmosphere and in the second container we have gas B represented by the blue dots and it has a pressure of three atmospheres, Dalton's law predicts that when we put those together we should be able to add the pressures to predict the total pressure of the mixture. If you put the red and the blue gas together we should get a total pressure of four atmospheres. One atmosphere from the red gas, three atmospheres from the blue gas equals a total of four when they're combined. Now here's an example. Scuba tanks, as you know, have a mixture of gases. This one has oxygen, nitrogen, and helium. And we're given the partial pressure of two of those gases. We're trying to find the partial pressure of the nitrogen. We want to make use of Dalton's law. So here I've substituted in my three gases. Next I'm going to substitute in the numbers that I'm given. The partial pressure of the oxygen was 0.26 atmospheres and the partial pressure of the helium was 0.17 atmosphere. And I know because the divers breathing at one atmosphere of pressure that represents my total. From here, it's just a matter of subtracting and getting the partial pressure of nitrogen by itself in the formula. If you do your math correctly, you should find the partial pressure of nitrogen is 0.57 atmospheres. And that's all there is to this. Let's try one more example. In this problem, we're not looking at a scuba tank, but we're looking at oxygen that's collected over water at 25 degrees Celsius and 760 millimeters of mercury pressure. Now the formula here is going to be the total pressure is equal to the partial pressure of that oxygen gas plus the vapor pressure of the water. You're given the vapor pressure of the water, so we're going to substitute that in, and I know the total pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury. So again, this formula is very simple. You're just adding and subtracting to rearrange it and get the partial pressure of that gas by itself. 760 millimeters of mercury minus 23.8 millimeters of mercury will give you a partial pressure of the oxygen here of 736.2 millimeters of mercury. And that's Dalton's Law. Now the last thing I'm going to give you are some definitions about the movement of gases in and out of containers. E-fusion is when a gas escapes from a hole in a container, something like a hole in a tire or if a balloon gets a hole in it and the gas slowly escapes. The smaller the molecules are, the faster they will move. Diffusion is very similar. When the gas spreads out, it goes from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure. Think of this example. When someone in one corner of a room opens a bottle of perfume, they can smell it immediately. If you're on the other side of the room, it might take a few minutes for you to be able to smell it. 
but the molecules of that perfume are diffusing they're mixing through the air in the room until they get to the other side and again the smaller the size of the particle the faster it diffuses so a molecule like hydrogen h2 will diffuse much faster than a larger molecule like chlorine cl2 just keep those two definitions in mind as you picture the gas molecules moving around in their space have a good day